Now this week's test drive was definitely a head turner as this vehicle attempts to reinvent the minivan wheel and they did quite well succeeding. Hey, welcome to this edition Road Warrior. I'm your host Grant Robertson. Now behind me is the 2022 Kia Carnival replacing the previous Sedona and making big changes. Now this vehicle is described as a multi-purpose vehicle MPV instead of the old traditional minivan language, but who are you fooling? It's still a minivan at heart. Now over the years, certainly these vehicles have transformed the industry, giving families multiple options when it comes to hauling people, cargo, and everything in between. And certainly the silhouettes have advanced as well, going from boxy, bulky looking, awkward grocery go-getters, everything from wood paneling to what we see here, blackened at the four corners, a little bit more kind of redefined silhouette, but at the end of the day, it serves multi-purposes, again with people, cargo, and basically getting the job done. Kia touts when it comes to the Carnival's overall design that it is boxy and bold. Wow, while the competition in some sorts is chiseling things up, life is suctioning there, nip and tuck, and basically keeping everything tight to the body. Here, a little bit more squared off approach, you could say. That gets back to the basics I've always said when it comes to SUVs and multi-purpose vehicles, is you gotta deliver, well, what people need, and that is interior volume. So keeping it at the square root of things really sets the tone here on the Carnival. Now, what you're seeing from the profile, you could say, takes you back just a hair. Is it a minivan? Is it kind of an elongated SUV? You could say it's all thrown into one, but what you're seeing again is the sportiness at the four corners. We've seen this across the industry as this kind of darkened, sporty look has really transcended the market. Everything from a, a Kano Go Getters on up to sporty vehicles, so naturally adopted here on the Kia. What's also new is the Kia logo rolled out, giving a new look, not really defined in the letters, but instead of kind of an art branding at the front and the back. But one thing that really sets off that this is, of course, from the realm of the minivan is certainly this groove right through here, meaning that this isn't a suicide door that swings out this way, but instead slides back the good old traditional minivan that we've all come to love. The Carnival certainly conveys the visual language seen over on the SUV side of things, the Telluride, the Sorento, bringing those elements over here to this multi-purpose vehicle, trying to keep it away from the likes of the minivan and making its own little niche. And they're trying to fill this unoccupied space between SUVs and family haulers, but this isn't like we're in Alaska and you're staking your claim on some uncharted territory. This is a highly congested area and they're going up with the likes of some big names, the Honda Odyssey, the Toyota Sienna, and of course those makes over there at Chrysler. But where they're trying to differentiate themselves is on the exterior and certainly they're doing it quite well because they're grabbing people's attention as you sweep down again that boxy look looking more like expeditions ford explorers tahoes not like a minivan that typically tapers up right here has a much more pointed nose this has a little bit more blunt force trauma when it comes to design at the four corners you're seeing these brawny wheel arches gives a sense of volume to this vehicle also cut lines that run from front to back even right through here it all blending in kind of hiding this groove that's traditional for the operation of the sliding side side doors you're also seeing a little curvaceous and chiseling here and there what you're going to see kia describe this vehicle as is more suv like boxy brawny all those terms are simply not used when referencing minivans. Also, of course, those sporty darkened rims, again, transcend across the industry, but really, again, push this vehicle into more SUV-like feel. Now, interestingly, one thing I would prefer is for this vehicle to have a little bit more lift visually off the ground. It is quite snug has the appearance of a low rider. Again, kind of that minivan S look. If they wanted to have a little bit more SUV appeal, certainly let's lift that up just a hair, giving it a little bit more road worthiness and prowess when you're there behind the wheel. Now sweep around to the grill warfare. Again, a wide stance, not a lot of length out front, but really a little bit of curve and a broad front end. Grill warfare really setting the tone first off with what we see right across here, a little darkened chrome kind of atmosphere, tapers in just a hair, chrome accents blending through the rest of the look, but obviously the wow factor is the headlight assembly. A lot of vehicles when it comes to SUVs, giving a big prowess overall look. This could be where a little bit more subdued with a menacing 
overall styling. First off with the daytime running lights that bedazzle through here, the headlights on the outer portions, tucked down low, some other lighting. By the numbers, this vehicle comes in quite lengthy. Overall, around about 203 inches. Just to give you a comparison, mid-size SUVs for me that are quite sizable already are typically around about 185 to 192 inches. So this one's certainly pushing in to a fuller size feel. Other numbers to talk about is width, fairly decent with the mirrors included, around about 89 inches. They account for about 10 additional inches with their overall size, certainly big mirrors to account for a big vehicle. As for height, around about 68 inches tall, which means again, SUVs typically are gonna be a little bit uh, taller feeling, upwards of six plus feet. This one being scaled down just a hair makes it feel a little bit more docile around those tight spots. Also, what you're going to see when it comes to ground clearance is just under seven inches. SUVs typically eight, nine, ten inches as they get more aggressive. So I would like to see this vehicle that is SUV-like give a little bit more lift. As for track, you're going to see equal numbers in the front and the rear. With the wow factor seen on the profile and the grill warfare, I did expect a little bit more kind of wow factor here at the back end. But at the end of the day, when it comes to the utilitarian side of things, this is where the business end of things end up with a pretty much straightforward status quo rear hatch assembly. There's a little bit of design elements with this broad sweeping rear tail light assembly. Mirrors what we see at the front with a very modest offering there with the headlight assembly. Huge broad sweeping glass. As for the rear windshield wiper, I do like bigger SUVs do this as well as here on the Carnival hiding the operation up here in the elongated rear spoiler. That way the operation is hidden, doesn't look bulky back here on the glass, keeps everything nice and sleek. Obviously we do have some safety backup camera, backup sensors. It also has the ability when you walk up with the key in your pocket, the vehicle is off. It will give you that audible three-tone alert. You can go hands-free, it knows you're there and it operates with ease. Basically you can use the key fob, that approach, or just simply reach down here for the electronic release. So what's interesting with this vehicle is the kind of multifaceted transformations that can happen in here. Traditionally, we are used to second, third rows, but that's just not the case here on the Carnival. First off, what you're gonna see is around about 40 cubic feet there behind the third row. I'll show you that in just a second, deep cavernous area hidden into the floor there. What you're gonna see as we see it here, around about 86 cubic feet. And with everything laid flat, around about 145 cubic feet all in with the amount of cargo when you need it. Now, what's interesting is what's going on through here with kind of this 60, uh, uh, 40 kind of split or maybe 80, 20. Basically, these outer seats are independent. This has a mind of its own, you could say. Basically, if you let's say you have three people here, maybe young children, and the uh, third child is, well, just aggravating. Well, it's real simple. Just simply grab right here on the bottom and now they're in the third row. That allows you to have the best of three rows without all the cumbersomeness that goes with it. In this case, you can kind of put cargo all the way around, the third person here in the middle, and the best thing is they can still see the entertainment found on this particular model. Now, lay flat seats is nothing new, and seeing this back here tucked in the bottom, again, just showing the operation of how things work. First off, you have this kind of carpeted layover. It hides the operation when you have all three rows in place. Makes everything look nice and sleek. Simply get it out of the way. Now, what you're seeing here is kind of a 70-30 split. Really nice and easy to use. And what I like with any vehicle is just simply all the instructions where you need it, and even better, step-by-step -step numbering. What you're seeing here is a one and a two. Basically, all you do is pull this handle here. It tumbles forward, locks into place, then just simply grab this handle and it will put into place the seat back itself. Once you do this, this is where you're getting that kind of deep cavernous area. So you're getting a lot lower uh, floor uh, line than you see here. Give a lot of, again, 40 cubic feet of space. Certainly headrest and what you're able to do is place three people back here and three there in the center. Now, admittedly, you can kind of work up a sweat when transforming the interior of any vehicle, and certainly here on the Kia is no different. Now, what you're gonna see when it comes to the second row here is different operations for either the outer seats or the center. Now, when it comes to the outer side, fairly straightforward. You have a handle here by your left thigh. You just simply pull it once, 
and it tumbles forward. Now, one thing to note is if you look at the headrests, they do kind of sling forward, which can impact the screens. Wouldn't hurt if that locked into place either when it comes up or down, but you can simply kind of lower that back because it will make it difficult to put it back in position. Now, once you raise it back up, what you also will notice is this handle here on the left hip area. Just simply pull it, it will tumble it forward and allow you to get that traditional aisle way there to the third row. Now, as for the third row, again, kind of like a nice jump seat, though it is comfortable for any individual and with the typical styling of both SUVs and minivans, no argument for feet place, plenty, plenty of room and a nice flat flooring. Now, maneuvering this again, fairly simple with the nice typical slider bar here on the bottom. Just simply press it and it can get up out of the way. Just grab it right here and you can slide it back forward. Now, if you do need to tumble this because maybe you only have four occupants or maybe one individual back here, whatever, then you can simply pull this tab here. That's going to tumble it forward real easy and give you a nice console flat area for devices or what have you and cup holders that they're going to need here in the second row while they're traveling. Tons of entertainment and connectivity here at the back end. We'll get to these screens in just a second, but first off, tri-zone system. Expect on a vehicle this large, you'll find the controls over there on the right. Real easy to use, fan speed, uh, temperature select, as well as various modes, obviously venting right where you need it. Now, as you sweep across, you'll see this interesting area right here. Now, what this is, is a camera as well as some microphones, and what that allows you to do as the pilot is to be able to talk kind of seamlessly from your rear passengers to the front without turning around and yelling and getting distracted keeping your eyes on the road if the passengers back here want to talk to you just simply press that button these microphones pick up and audibly can be heard a lot easier than the traditional yelling back and forth now as we sweep over to the screens what you're going to see is just simple power buttons on either side, really letting each individual on either side do as they please. Some shortcuts as you see here. It took me a second to find the other connectivity and that is found over here on the far left side in the form of there the HDMI and the USB. That's gonna allow each side to kind of entertain as they see fit. Now, once you sweep around back to the back of the center console, some extra dual cup holders as well, but nice household outlet. That's gonna be helpful for those electronic devices and a traditional car charger here on the right. Just in case you need to charge up some more, you will find these nice niches on the side of the front seats, USB connectivity, that's gonna charge them up real quick. You also find light connections there on the third row. To close the power sliding door, simply use the remote, the handle, or the button here on the side pillar, and the doors will close up quite easily. More connectivity found at the very back, the cargo side of things, household traditional power outlet, as well as a traditional car outlet right above. When it comes to overall size of this vehicle, you can't have a four cylinder under the hood, even if it is turbocharged, you gotta go more traditional, exactly what Kia delivers here, specifically a 3.5 liter V6 engine. That has around about 290 horses and 262 foot-pounds of torque, coupled nicely to an eight-speed automatic transmission. Some other numbers to think about is fuel economy, averaging around about 22 miles per gallon. As for fill-up, all-in, this vehicle can hold around about 19 gallons. That compared to an SUV of this sort, easily going to creep into the mid-20-gallon range. Larger ones getting over 30 gallons of fill-up. Lastly, is this, if this vehicle is multi-purpose it's got to do all things like an suv and that means towing capabilities this vehicle able to deliver around about 3500 pounds of your favorite well towing apparatus now one place you definitely want to end up on a humid day like today is on the inside and really first note is the tri-zone system and how quickly it cools this vehicle down now at first glance the venting is almost nondescript right here through the middle very modest offering and there on the outer sides, but I found that it is perfectly sized for this vehicle, specifically here in the front, giving you tons of airflow quickly and right where you need it versus some other kind of bulky design. The venting really blending into the overall uh, look of this vehicle. Now sweeping down right into the climate controls, uh, again, like the sleekness of this design. Typically I do like knobs, but this looks a lot more plush 
and just kind of blends in with the overall look. As for changing everything, I typically like a knob with the fan speed, but again, fairly easy to use. Temperature select here on the outer side, and we'll, we'll see the digital display, and right there in the middle is the rear climate. Just simply press right there, then you can simply operate it. And again, what I like is it does navigate up to the screen up above, give you a nice visual as, other, as well as some other menu select. Now, while we're on the screen, one thing I like is the tri-zone system and its dual purpose, either with the traditional controls down below or the screen right here, because when it comes to third row occupants, oftentimes it's gonna be small children. They shouldn't operate the climate control, nor can they reach it. So right here, the driver or co-pilot can just reach right up, change the temperature setting. They can go up and down here as well, or just simply press on the fan speed and change the various fan settings. Even better is over here on the right are some various menu functions, but the one I like is locking the rear climate control. So if maybe the individuals can get to it, like small children, you can turn that off so they have no effect on changing what's back there. Now, one thing you really wanna do when you have smaller children is communicate. And what I like here on the Carnival is the passenger talk. And you've seen this maybe on commercials, is you just simply pull it up. You can leave this on all the time and you can probably not pick it up right now, but there's kind of this little audible effect. You can hear my voice there in the back and all I'm doing is just simply looking forward and the uh, microphones up above me are picking up my voice and projecting them through the speakers back there. Even better is you can of course turn it off when needed. Then you can go over to the passenger view. This gives you, again, multiple purposes. First off, camera view allows you to see what's going on back there, see the arguments as they're happening, and obviously who is bothering who. You do have the talk now feature as well here. That allows you to obviously do corrective behavior as you're driving, glance down, see what's going on, and best of all is have eyes on what's going on behind you. Not to make this all about the children, but another nice feature is the quiet mode. When activated, basically by pressing this button here, that means the speakers, any music being played will only be heard here in the front. If the volume is actually above seven, it will be decreased to seven, making it more of a tranquil ride and helping to maybe quiet the noise in the back. Between the front occupants, you will find dual cup holders. I am a big fan of this spring material, holds your drinks with these. You do have this kind of center divide. In this case, actually does hold my phone, which also see again is traditional gear shifter. Some manufacturers are going with the push button option. I do like a traditional gear shifter, just lets me feel a little bit more in control. Buttons just haven't kind of migrated to that overall feeling. What you also see down below is nice wireless charging option. Just simply slide in your said device. Takes a little bit of extra effort if you have a case on like myself, but once it's in there, you're gonna pretty much forget about it. What you also have is USB connections and that indicator lets you know the charging is working with the wireless and again, another USB. For this vehicle, you do have various driving modes that I did keep mine just basically in normal, but once you press it, you do have Econo, Sport, and Smart. Now, I don't think of this vehicle as being kind of a sport mode, so I'd almost alleviate that altogether and keep it Econo, Smart, or um, normal. When backing up or getting to those tight spots, you do have a function allowing you to turn on the surround view cameras. This helps when you're in kind of those parking situations. Really this bird's eye view allowing you to kind of look around the vehicle, see if there's anything in harm's way, as well as over here, the backup look in this particular shot as you move, maneuver around. This one here at the back, giving kind of that look down. This is helpful maybe when you're backing up close to a pole, the backup camera certainly can get you there. Also curbing. As you move down, this will give you the side views down the vehicle. Again, making sure you're not close to anything that could leave a scratch or ding. One thing to note that when you get into drive, the camera views for that particular mode will pop up. As you can tell, I can go to the upper view here in drive, as well as those particular side views. So depending on which gear selection you're in, then you'll see the corresponding cameras. Nothing really to write home about when it comes to the gauge cluster analog tack and speedometer, but a nice digital readout there in the middle. You do have multiple views, but the best of course is digital readout 
for speed. As for the steering wheel, tons of operations, specifically here on the right, cruise control, which of course has that kind of driver fatigue mode, which basically means it helps the steering wheel modestly keep you in place, though you will have to keep your hands on the steering wheel. It's not truly autonomous. Over here on the left side is entertainment functions as well as for your phone. That does it for this edition where we're in a test drive behind the wheel of the 2022 Kia Carnival a vehicle that's multifaceted, multi-purposed, and has a blending of all worlds, the likes of SUVs, some minivans, and again, Kia wanting it to fit in that kind of unoccupied space between SUV and family hauler. Though I say it is tough competition, but this vehicle is starting off quite well overall. Now, what it really delivers is, again, a wow factor on the outer side, but some extra pizzazz there on the inside. But at the end of the day, it's about being multifaceted, and this vehicle does quite well. Now, all in tested, this vehicle came in around about $42,000. Not too bad considering other vehicles of this capability can easily exceed that by 10, 15, even $20,000 range. Now, thank you for watching this edition of Warrior. Keep both hands on the wheel and eyes straight ahead.